All right then, you join us on the middle seven, and as you can see, it is tanking through. So I'm gonna run you through a few little bait hacks and tips on how I go about approaching and presenting for the barbel. So a little bit on, the, on swim selection on a flooded river. As you can see, you don't wanna be trying to fish to the far bank. It's, it's absolutely tanking through. But on this near side, you've got cover, and this, this upstream cover is creating this lovely big, I say slack, it's not a slack, but much steadier water. And those fish, they're gonna get pushed up into the inside. They're gonna to wanna to live in that water because let's face it, you don't wanna be living out there, do you? So that, they've got a conveyor belt there, so any food coming down the river, it's quite mild today, so they, they should be up for a feed. They can nip onto the crease, intercept anything coming down when they want to feed, and then come back in and, and sit right in this nice calm water where they're nice and safe. Great places to, uh, to fish in flooded, flooded water. So while I'm fishing here, I'm going to prepare a few other spots, and that'll be, I'm only going to put, that's, just, that's one of the small boppers, I'm going to put three or four in each sort of spot that I like the look of. When the river's up, you're literally looking under the rod tip, because when you know this, it's important that you're fishing water that, you, that you're confident in, you've seen in the summer, so you know where that edge of the bank is, so you, you just want to be into the main river, anywhere slower. Obviously, if you're chucking on the bank, you're running the risk of putting all your tackle in trees and all the debris. So I know there's a couple of swims further down. I'm going to just prepare them with this, the natural hemp. Every barbel loves hemp, doesn't it? Most fish love hemp. So I'm going to pop that in. And what I'm going to do, because there's a certain amount of liquid in that tin already, I'm going to add my liquids to, straight to the hemp so it disperses through the water. So I'm just going to... Don't need loads of it. Just make it as smelly as possible. As you can see in there, just going to quickly turn that through all the water in there. So all those liquids are evenly dispersed now. So when I add the pellet, you're not getting like globules of extra att attraction on other certain pieces. And again, all I'm doing is I've got my mixture of spicy sausage, cheesy garlic in different sizes. I've got fours and sixes in there. I'm going to put a couple of handfuls of those in. Just turn them in. A couple of handfuls of, again, the same pellet, but in an 8mm. So heavier items that hopefully will sit stationary for longer. I'm going to put a few handfuls of those because it's pushing through hard today. And it is literally just about giving those fish a little taster before you go into the swim. So they're a lot more confident to pick something up. So I'll, I'll just let that settle for five minutes. And that, those pellets will absorb most of that extra goodness. And we'll go prime some swims. So you may have seen in the, uh, in the summer when I was fishing here, I was using single 8 mil pellets as a hook bait. Um, something I do a lot more when there's a lot of water in the river is up the size. I think it's, it's a bigger food item. You don't need to put as much food in. So when, like I say, if I'm packing that ground bait really tight into the feeder and you've got a big smelly bait on the end, um, a lot of the time it'll be the pellet hose. Um, using these 14 mil spicy sausage pellet hoes and not only are they really attractive and a, a bigger food item they're heavy so you, you've seen the river today it's really turbulent and what that can do is lift your hook bait off the bottom and spin it and catching the debris basically if there's leaf litter coming down if you've got a, a heavier hook bait it will stay in place for longer So onto the ground bait, and um, this is a 50-50 mix 
of the matey salmon and the hemp and halley crush and I've not missed up well in advance because oh, on a flooded river it, in my eyes it's really important that it's sticky I've I really over wet it so all the ground bait can take on the moisture I've got additives in there which will help with the stickiness the oils so I've got the liquid enhancer and the absolute fish oil and a bit of haze just that's just the krill and squid and the idea being is I need it as sticky as possible because I want it to stay in the feeder and create a longer leakage. I've fed with the bopper, so I've put a little bit of bait down and all I want is a really smelly parcel that's letting a, a few little bits of attraction off. But then with my long hook link, like a scent trail, so they home in, they're feeding on all the loose offerings that I've put in and then there's one really smelly bit and hopefully they follow that line and then they come up across your hook bait. The idea of it being sticky is obviously so it stays in the feeder longer. That river's got two metres of extra water on. So if you're normally fishing six foot, you've got an extra two metres on that and it's pushing through. So you want that bait to get down to the bottom. I'll be adjusting the mixture in the session, feeling my way through the session. Hopefully, if I feel that the fish need more feed, what I'll end up doing, there's a few pellets in there now, just a couple of big handfuls, six mil, four mil, the odd eight mil. Um, so I've got leakage off that already, but if I feel they need more feed, what I will end up doing is sandwiching more pellets in. That's just again a mixture of sixes and fours in there. And again, I've coated those with my usual oils and flavours. Um, sometimes just a, a quick change, but that'll, having extra pellets in the feeder will help push the ground bait out quicker as well. So it'll get down to the bottom. And instead of having that long line of leakage, if those fish are hungry and they want feeding, those pellets pushing the ground bait out should theoretically get them grubbing around more. So just feeling the way into the swim really. So a little tip on, uh, on bait application, it's well worth having a variety of feeders. Um, so I, with the ground bait, I've got a few pellets in this ground bait and that's just sort of if I was going to use that on its own, I'm going to pack it in really tight. That's why I was saying earlier about a sticky mix. I want it really firm in there and it's literally pretty much just a scent trail. A big, it will slowly break down. You can leave that in for, for a period of time, half hour onwards, and, and most of it will stay in the feeder. And it's something to do when I've got I've got bait in the swim already, so there's fish grubbing round, and really I just want that to home them in on the line of, of the hook bait. Another variation of that is scalded pellets, and where you need a bit more weight, if, if it's really up, a big gripper, gripper lead, scold your pellets, and again just plug it in really hard, almost like a paste, so that again is just, it's just a scent trail. And then you've got, it's almost a, a block end on one, one side, so I can fill it up with pellet, a little wire feeder. As you can see, those pellets are in there, can't come out the one end, and I'm just literally thumbnailing that off. And when the fish are feeding a bit more aggressively, and they want a bit of food putting in at them, that hits the bottom. The ground bait quickly flushes out and the pellets run down the swim, allowing the fish to feed on the free offerings. Um, those are also available in, in like, on bigger sizes. So if you want to put more bait in, you can. But they're sort of my feeder approach to the ground bait and the pellet. Again, going on the, uh, on the weight of pellet and using heavier food items. Um, again, when, the, when there's water in the river and there's a lot of turbulence, I would be aiming to feed more eight mil and above. Again, to sort of get the feed nailed down on the bottom. There's, I think a lot of the smaller pellets, the, the fours and the sixes, there's so much water pushing through they can end up washing out your peg. So if you've got eight onwards in your mix, 
you know there's always a little bit of food knocking around. I think those sort of lock up into the sort of rocks and the gravel on the bottom and stay around much longer. 